Welcome Vintage Hollywood Archive. Mitzi Gaynor was the queen of light musicals. The Bride-Eyed, with her vibrant, vivacious zest for life, provides musical justification for bringing almost everyone in the room to their feet with screaming ovations. It's hard to find someone as talented, versatile, and dynamic as Mitzi Gaynor. She is rare. How could Mitzi Gaynor cheer anyone up? Make sure to watch the video until the end if you are new here. Don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to my channel. Mitzi Gaynor, a versatile celebrity, star of There's No Business Like Show Business. Mitzi Gaynor is an American singer, actress, dancer, newspaper columnist, Las Vegas headliner, concert star, and a loving wife. Yes, she's done it all. Have you ever felt so much positive energy around a person that you felt alive even when you had a really bad day? That's exactly who Mitzi Gaynor is. She can spread smiles and positivity with her mere presence. There's a lot more to talk about her, and surely by the end of this video, you will fall in love with her, even if you're not already her fan. Her original name was Francesca Marlene de Chanyi von Gerber, and she was born on September 4, 1931 in Chicago, Illinois, United States. From being a ballet dancer as a child, to fitting into the Great American Songbook Hall of Fame in 2017, her journey was pretty solid. She's been in several films that are probably still widely hailed by film buffs such as There's No Business Like Show Business and even South Pacific. She's featured alongside some of the biggest names and has been part of several shows that have managed to capture people's attention for decades. However, her cheerful personality adds fuel to her character. She can do any accent, sing any tempo, and tell a joke with timing that will make you howl. Let's take a deeper look at her life. Even as a young girl, Mitzi was ambitious. She's the daughter of a dancer and a violinist music director, so it's a bit obvious that performance is in her blood. When she was 11, she began training as a ballerina and as a chorus dancer, and at 13, she was singing and dancing with the Los Angeles Civic Light Opera Company. She even went so far as to lie so that she could attend Hollywood High School. Giving them a false address allowed her to attend the prestigious institution. Though you can imagine that nowadays, this would be a big no-no. Indeed, she deserves to be appreciated for having the courage to do such a thing and take a huge risk. By the time she was 17, Mitzi had signed a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox. She sang, danced, and starred with some of the most famous male musical stars of the era. Unfortunately, her name sounded to some like something you'd name a cafe, and so it was switched from Gerber. So they came up with a name that used her initials but was much different and more appealing. Eventually, she made her film debut in My Blue Heaven in 1950 and was supporting Betty Grable and Dan Daly. Eventually, she followed this up with Take Care of My Little Girl. After that, Graynor was given a part in the musical biopic Golden Girl. It had some success, but not a lot. Her career was pretty solid. She received top billing for some of her work and managed to help the film she was in make pretty good money. She did have to share the billing with bigger stars occasionally, which is pretty natural. But for the most part, Mitzi's career was going well for a long time. But whenever someone talks about Mitzi Grainer's career, it's impossible not to talk about her greatest achievement, which is There's No Business Like Show Business, which was opened December 16, 1954, with an all-star cast and score built around classic songs from Irving Berlin. The film follows a vaudeville couple, Molly and Terry Donahue, played by Ethel Merman and Dan Daly, who raised their three children in the theater to varying results. Steve, played by Johnny Ray, ends up leaving the act to pursue his dream on another stage. Gods, joining the priesthood, much to his parents' initial embarrassment. Katie, played by Mitzi Grainer, follows in her parents' footstep all the way to Broadway and gets hitched along the way to Charles Gibbs, played by Hugh O'Brien and perhaps the most dramatic of them all. Tim, played by Donald O'Connor, falls for hat-check rising starlet Vicki Parker, played by Marilyn Monroe, which puts a strain on their family act when she joins as an opener and eventually takes Katie and Tim to Broadway with her. This movie certainly provides an explosive performance to keep the audience occupied until the end. It has the high energy of the musical numbers and comedy provided by most of the cast, especially Merman and Monroe. Contrast with some of the more serious storylines, including Steve entering the priesthood 
and Tim's alcohol abuse and eventual desertion of his family. The tonal changes can be a bit jarring, but the cast handles them well. While celebrating the 60th anniversary of There's No Business Like Show Business in December 2014, Mitzi Gaynor cheerfully took the stage at the Regent Theatre before the picture began. She walked slowly, not because she had trouble walking, but rather she took some time to gaze out into the audience. And she asked the crowd, So, what are you kids doing here? Her voice had youthful energy to it. We're here to see you, several people shouted. She was beaming. Oh, isn't that nice? She has always been like that. Lively, vibrant, vivacious. The voice may not be what it once was, and there's no room to dance. But when she tells her stories, she pours life into her words and makes it a perfect combination of nostalgia and humor. During a vibrant Q&A with critic Stephen Farber at the Regent Theatre in 2014, she talked about her romantic life more accurately. Apparently, she was dating someone when she was 18, but broke it off because she fell in love with Howard Hughes. The legendary Hughes wanted to marry me in the worst way. She said, One can only imagine. I was 18. And I was so hot. Well, no one could ever accuse Grainer of being bashful. She pointed to an audience member in the front row. You were hot when you were 18 too, weren't you? You're never going to be that hot again. Though this could sound like an insult, it wasn't intended as such. That comment was playfully aimed at everyone in the audience, Gaynor included. The actress turned Hughes's proposal down because he was too old. She was 18 and he was 47. Now that's nothing, she exclaimed. Though she didn't accept his offer of marriage, Hughes gave her something else that she did take. Advice. He advised her to buy some dirt in Las Vegas and she ended up purchasing five acres on the Las Vegas Strip. I'm a widow, you know, and I'm very rich. That's why I'm here, she joked in her signature style. Gaynor then shared a story that made her a bit teary-eyed. You're going to love this by the time I get to it. Apparently, she was dating an agent at MCA right after she broke up with Hughes. Gaynor was set to meet a friend for dinner, but her friend wanted to take her to an opening at the Coconut Grove instead. Grainer dramatically recalled that she couldn't leave the house because she had just broken up with Hughes and the paparazzi would eat me alive. It was amazing how many people were dying to be with Mitzi Gaynor. Anyway, getting to the point of her story, a man showed up at her door that evening to accompany her to the opening. She said, Where he came from or who sent him, I have no idea. But Gaynor lovingly described him for the audience and recalled their meeting. I'm here to pick up Mitzi Gaynor, he told her. I'm Mitzi Gaynor. I'm a movie star. Don't you know me? She dramatically pouted. I'm sorry, Ms. Grainer. I only see foreign films, he replied, to which she made a droll face. You'd think she would have discarded that man so fast. Jack Bean was his name. But that wasn't the case. In fact, she stuck with him for 52 years, until he died in 2006. Bean became her manager, lover, producer, protector, boss, and best friend. She recalled with tears in her eyes. I called him daddy. He called me yummy. Couldn't you just throw up? Jack Bean was a talent agent and PR executive for MCA. She'd been released from her contract with 20th Century Fox with four years left and decided that it was a good time to get married. Eventually, Bean quit MCA and started a real estate business and took on managing his wife's career. That day before the 2014 event was the 8th anniversary of her husband's passing. Given the occasion, Gaynor wasn't sure she would have the strength to attend the event that night, though she was reassured by her friends that she could do it. The audience reaction to her mere presence that evening should have been another stirring indicator. She peaked in the movie musicals of the 1950s, then made rating history with 10 years of glitzy, ritzy, brucker-breaking specials that revolutionized television in the 1960s. When she finally got out of film, she was still pretty popular and would even sing songs at the Academy Award shows. One of her performances was her show-stopping appearance at the 39th Academy Awards, where her singing and dancing Georgie Girl stopped the show. The Academy had a hard time getting the audience to sit down and stop applauding. She also hosted a string of successful annual musical TV specials in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Her lasting success has come in television and from her decades as a celebrated nightclub headliner. She once said in an interview, I loved being a movie star, 
but I'm not sure I was all that good. The camera always got in my way. I was never as comfortable making a film as I am on television or on stage in front of a live audience. During the 1960s and 70s, she featured in no less than nine TV specials that managed to grab 16 Emmy nominations. Despite the fame and popularity she enjoyed, however, she would eventually start to fizzle out a bit and was later seen to entertain in Las Vegas at nightclubs and concert venues. She would make her way across the US and Canada for shows occasionally as well. She became a columnist for The Hollywood Reporter in the 90s and would even go on TV for interviews, having become a regular in the city of Vancouver. She continued to make her way back to Las Vegas to fulfill her usual routines, but stepped away from the spotlight in 1996 when her husband and longtime manager, Jack Bean, became ill, and then he passed away in December 2006. She was truly shattered, but didn't give up. She talked about it after launching her show and said, I wasn't sure I would work again, because I didn't know if I could even be Mitzi Gaynor anymore. We were one person, Jack and I. We were the Beans. We weren't Mitzi and Jack, we were just the Beans. When Jack passed away, I thought he took me with him. A short time later, I decided to auction off some of my beautiful Bob Mackie costumes to benefit the Professional Dancers Society. Then Gaynor soon began work on a new one-woman show, Razzle Dazzle, My Life Behind the Sequins, an intimate evening of love, laughs, and music. The show premiered at San Francisco's Herbest Theatre in 2009, and Gaynor brought it to Feinstein's at Lowe's Regency in New York the following year. Time seems to run backward when Mitzi Gaynor makes her first entrance on the opening night. Covered in an oversized sailor suit, she doesn't appear to have aged a day since she wore the same kind of costume in her most remembered film of South Pacific in 1958. Her mere appearance generated a standing ovation. Instead of basking in the appreciation, Gaynor pretended to leave and joked, Okay, next show is tomorrow at 8.30. That cheerful entry set the tone for this fun, lively 90-minute set. Not only is the legendary Gaynor still a dynamic entertainer of the old school, but she's damn funny too. People over 70 are always retiring, but not Mitzi Gaynor. When she gets her face on, she's still camera-ready for a close-up. When her sizzling dance moves are now restricted to a few selected steps, Razzle Dazzle, My Life Behind the Sequins is an absolute trip through a fascinating career and a joyful musical treat. The format is a scaled-down version of her TV specials and nightclub acts. The heart of the show is Gaynor's hilarious showbiz stories. There are also musical numbers sandwiched in between six costume changes. Indeed, this show is funny, nostalgic, poignant, and a total star-spangled package of energy and joy. She was enlisted into the Great American Songbook Hall of Fame in 2017, and the year before that, she was honored with the Legend Award from Nigel Lithgow's Dizzy Feet Foundation. Gaynor has had the career and has made herself into something that those who remember her can look fondly as they recall the good old days, when she was still a big star and was up on the screen with some of the greatest in the business. To date, she's still one of those people who seek to remember as one of the many that have helped to lead the way when it comes to song and dance in Hollywood. She is one of those who couldn't be beaten when it's about entertaining people. She can make you dance, she can boost up your mood with her stories, and she can make you laugh with her timely jokes. Apart from her funny side, Mitzi Gaynor is a philanthropist and humanitarian who is deeply concerned about the state of the world, for which she has great compassion and idealism. She has a utopian personality and spends her life trying to realize some aspects of her utopian dream, sacrificing money, time, and energy for a better world. That adds another entirely different trait to her personality. Indeed, she is all-in-one, as Gower Champion once said. The trouble with Mitzi is nobody can peg her. She doesn't do just one thing well. She does it all. Creative, daring, innovative, glamorous, colossal, and one of a kind. Mitzi Gaynor is the real deal. She still razzles, she still dazzles, and she's still here. Thank you for watching the video until the end. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. Until then... Stay tuned. Mitzi Gaynor really had the talent to entertain. It was in her blood. When she was performing, she charmingly shone. No one could have taken the attention away from her. This was not the case with Sid Charisse and Demi Reynolds. Watch this video and find out how Sid Charisse stole the show from Reynolds.